All right, this is the skiing dome. She wants to go skiing. She likes to go skiing. She's literally just a dome. So skiing dome for scleroderma, because this scene is going to be on scleroderma. You might have been wondering, it doesn't really look like a girl. Well, I'll take my word for it, it is a girl. And that's important. Okay, fine, we'll give her hair. This is just to help us remember that scleroderma occurs mainly in females. 75% female. Okay, now let's get to the disease. So there's a lot going on on this little skiing hill over here. But first, let's talk about what scleroderma is. So scleroderma, also known as systemic sclerosis, is an autoimmune disease in which normal skin is replaced by thick, dense connective tissue. And this is easy because sclera in Greek means hard and derma means skin. So it's hardening of the skin. So let's talk about this. So here on this hill over here, we find these things going down. And these three things are gonna help us remember the triad in scleroderma. First, we note is this car with the moon, or the auto-moon, the auto-moon auto-immunity. So the pathology of this disease is not well understood. It's thought to be caused by a genetic predisposition and some sort of external trigger. But be that as it may, in terms of, it presents with auto-immunity. This auto-immune is running over this vessel to help us remember the vasculopathy, the non-inflammatory vasculopathy, as well as we see this car going off that hill into this college over here, the college over here, college for collagen. Scleroderma is associated with a collagen deposition with the fibrosis. And we have these fighting roses up here on top of the college over here. You see these fighting roses up here. Doubles, remember the fibrosis. This leads to decreased blood flow and ischemic tissue damage. Now let's talk about the findings. So here we see a classic picture of the skin in scleroderma. There's commonly a sclerosis of skin manifesting as puffy, taut skin without wrinkles. That's often shiny, smooth, and stiff. I guess this is the dean of the college over here, and her findings over here are going to help us remember those symptoms. And if we look at these hands over here, I don't know if someone played a joke and put these hands in the college or something, but we take a look at these fingers over here, we note fingertip pitting. Fingertip pitting is another symptom seen in scleroderma. But of course, scleroderma doesn't only affect the skin, it affects other systems as well. It could affect the kidneys, which is associated with a scleroderma renal crisis. It could affect the lungs, which is associated with an interstitial fibrosis and a pulmonary hypertension, as well as the GI tract, in which there's esophageal dysmotility and reflux. And it could even affect the heart. But let's talk about the two main types of scleroderma. So we note on this hill over here, on top of the crest of the hill, we see a speed limit sign. And on the bottom over here, we see a sign that says dead fuse. There's a dead fuse over here. The limit sign, the speed limit sign is gonna help us remember limited scleroderma or limited to cutaneous scleroderma. And the dead fuse sign is gonna help us remember diffuse scleroderma or diffuse cutaneous scleroderma. Let's talk about each one. So in diffuse, represented by dead fuse scleroderma, there's widespread skin involvement with rapid progression as well as early visceral involvement. Certain antibodies are associated with, with, with this condition, which could help in diagnosis. Specifically, anti-SCL70 antibody, which is an anti-DNA topoisomerase 1 antibody, anti-RNA polymerase 3 antibody, as well as anti-centromere antibody. Limited scleroderma, represented by this speed limit sign, is on top of the crest of this hill to help us remember that, that it's sometimes also known as crest syndrome because of the findings. C for calcinosis cutis, R for Raynaud phenomenon, in which the fingers turn white, then blue, and then red upon exposure to cold, E for esophageal dysmotility, S for sclerodactyly, and T for telangiectasia. It's important to remember that the limited scleroderma has a more benign clinical course because it's more limited, because it's more confined. It's limited skin involvement that's confined usually to the fingers and face. All right, in terms of treatment, generally immunosuppressants are given to slow down the course of the disease, and otherwise, things are just given to treat the specific symptoms. There's no cure for scleroderma, but hopefully they'll come up with one. All righty, take care.